So, in my first Kingdom Hearts related video on this channel, I talked about some of the more obscure aspects of KH1, and in the last section of that video, I highlighted some especially well-hidden treasure chests in the game. As I noted in the video, KH1 does not keep track of the chests you've opened, and you're bound to beat and even 100% the game without opening every single chest. In the days that followed, I came to realize that there also isn't really a comprehensive video guide for collecting every item and chest in KH1. There's stuff out there for all the Dalmatians and all the Trinities, but not everything else in between. So, somebody has to do it, right? And I know in my video that compares KH1 and 2, I lauded KH1 for its air of mystery and never revealing all of its secrets to you, and I'm kind of about to ruin that, but hey, I'm an outsider source, so you'd have to seek something like this out. Uh, for the sake of time, I'm not going to bother covering stuff that's mandatory to collect to beat the game, like the potion in the tutorial, uh, the raft materials, the Jungle King keychain, stuff like that. Anyone playing the game and driving the plot forward is going to run into those things inevitably. Um, so just some housekeeping before we get started. This is going to be for the final mix version of the game. Uh, once again, I'm playing on the 1.5 and 2.5 remix for PS4. We're going to go chronologically here and do as much as we can in each world on our first visit. As soon as we have the abilities to access new stuff in old worlds, we'll circle back there and deal with that. So I'll be putting some timestamps in the description that you can click for each world if there's anything in particular you're looking for, and subsequent visits to each world will be subtitled with whatever ability can help you get your hands on some new stuff. Also in the description will be a link to a Google Sheets file that lists every optional item in the game world by world, and if you want, you can make a copy of it for yourself and keep track of what items you have or haven't collected. And lastly, I am just going to preemptively acknowledge that I have surely missed something. I'm like 90% sure I have collected every item in this game at least once, but I would not be surprised if I accidentally neglected to include something here, so please let me know if I missed anything in the comments, and I'll add a correction to the description. But fingers crossed, hopefully I got everything. Alright, here we go. I'm going to try to keep the pace brisk so that this video isn't 9 hours long. So starting things off is a bit of a technicality, but I figured I should cover it for the sake of being thorough. If you choose to start a new game on Final Mix Beginner, you'll be given the Ribbon and EXP Necklace accessories, as well as 8 Defense and Power Ups, and 4 AP Ups. You can technically consider most of these missable, but you can synthesize all of these items except for the EXP Necklace, and you'll find plenty of stat boosters throughout your journey. As for the EXP Necklace, you'll get one for defeating the Unknown figure, so really, I don't recommend playing on Beginner unless you're woefully unfamiliar with video games, or just want to experience the story, or are trying to gather footage as quickly as possible for a YouTube video. As for Destiny Islands, all the optional rewards are extremely easy to replace, but you can farm potions by defeating the Final Fantasy kids in a 3-on-1 or from dueling against Riku in the first day. Likewise, you can get as many pretty stones as you want for winning the race against Riku on the second day, which can be sold for some money. There are actually a finite amount of pretty stones in the game, so if you're a collector, you need to win the race uh, 96 times if you wanted to max them out in your inventory. Lastly, in the cove on the second day, you can use this crate to get a boost up to this alcove where a protect chain can be found. Alright, the world's ended, moving on to Traverse Town, there's a mithril shard on this cabinet in the accessory shop. You can grab your first postcard by hitting the ceiling fan in the item shop and mail that for a cottage. You can get the second postcard with a bit of rooftop climbing and mail that one off for another mithril shard. Postcard number 3 is on the top of the Boots and Shoes awning in the 2nd District, mail that one off for a Mega Potion. Speaking of, in the 2nd District, there's a chest with another Mega Potion on a ledge of the Gizmo Shop's exterior. During your fight with Leon, I recommend winning, as you'll receive an Elixir after beating Guard Armor. Look how ashamed he is that he got beat by a pubescent Mickey Mouse cosplayer. Regardless, immediately after the Leon fight, you can grab an Elixir in this chest in the green room. While you're there, might as well skip the Hotel Desk hints and hit this clock 10 times in order to spawn the Mithril chest. In the alleyway after the Soldier Invasion, grab this potion here here next to these boxes, and you can use one to get a boost up to this ledge for a pretty stone. Make your way to the other end of the balconies to grab yet another potion. Then make your way to the red room and grab this chest for an additional pretty stone, the last one you'll see till the end of the world. Ignore Donald and Goofy here, I filmed this one out of order, but make your way back to the first district and unlock this vault for postcard number 4 and mail that for a Mega Aether. While you're here, talk to Aerith for a Mega Potion, which is missable if you beat Guard Armor without visiting her first. After that fight, you can do an incredibly easy glitch to access the secret waterway early. Simply avoid all of the Trinity Marks and go to the metal bars blocking your path, keep your left stick held forward, and walk through. In doing this, you can get puppies 10, 11, and 12 much earlier than normal. Film this one a bit out of order too, but as soon as you beat Guard Armor, you can access the roof of the Gizmo Shop and make your way over to these buildings and grab this Mithril Shard. Then head through the opening to get to the 3rd District and grab your 5th postcard on the corner here. You can mail this one for a Mithril. Jump on down and use the Blue Trinity behind the fountain for a camping set. While you're here, might as well make your way to the Mystical House and do the Blue Trinity there for a Mega Aether. Back in the 1st District, use this Blue Trinity near the World Exit for some money and use the one near the Cafe to reach the 6th postcard and the last one you can get on your first visit and send that one off for an Elixir. Moving on to Wonderland, after you enter the Queen's Castle for the first time, turn around and go back to the Rabbit Hole, defeat three waves of Heartless for a camping set, which will be replaced with a Mega Elixir if you do this after saving Kyrie and Hollow Bastion. 
In the Lotus Forest, make a right for this blue trinity to get an ether, a potion, and a tent. Right next to that mark is the footprints evidence. You only need one to progress, but I'll show you where you can get all four. Now you can make a series of trades with the local flowers, some of which are downgrades if you ask me, but they're available. The red flower near the entrance will trade an ether for a camping set. The yellow one next to the blue trinity mark will upgrade you from a potion to a high potion, and the red one further into the forest will also swap you a camping set for an ether. If you want to be a show-off, you can climb up the mushrooms near the first red flower and keep blade jump to get puppies 16, 17, and 18. Or just go the other way and get it like a normal person. On the lily pad near the boulder at the back of the room is the antenna evidence, and from here you can make a sort of tricky jump to get to this scan gummy early. The stench evidence can be found if you go through this hole in the tree here and drop down to the stove top in the bazaar room. As for the last piece of evidence, give the yellow flower near the entrance a potion to get bigger, jump on this stump, and then use the raised lily pads to get through this entrance, dropping you onto a faucet in the bazaar room. Jump across here for the claw marks evidence, as well as early access to Blizzard, courtesy of the Cheshire Cat. After Crank Tower, get big again and push this boulder into the water, and use those lily pads to access this closed-off area with a blue trinity. Use that to get a camping set. Also, trade this red flower a high potion, and it'll give you a mega potion in return. Head on through the opening to get back to the Queen's Castle, and open this chest for puppies 13, 14, and 15. Now progress through the world normally to reach the tea party garden. Every chair except the cushiony pink ones will give you prizes, while the other two will spawn heartless. Sit here for an elixir, here for a potion, here for an ether, here for another potion, and here for yet another potion. In the next room, using this latch will take you back to the Queen's Castle, where you can access this Thundara gummy. Back in the Lotus Forest, if you go through the opening that led you to the claw marks evidence, you'll find yourself in this tilted bazaar room where you can pour water into this pot in order to get to the last of the hedge chests in the Queen's Castle, a meteor gummy. Head back to this version of the bazaar room and then through this hole in the stove to get to yet another bazaar room remix. Light this lamp and a lion will vomit this defense up. Light the other to make this painting follow Super Mario 64 rules. Before going in, brutalize this teddy bear. Trust me, it's important. Head into the painting and do another potion to high potion upgrade. This flower's asking price is the highest with an elixir, but it gives you a mithril shard in return. On your way to fight Trick Master, examine the flower pot that you raised from the ground by lighting the first lamp, and you'll get two potions and a mithril shard. Drink this surely illegal liquid to get big. Use your expanded brain to read this book for mithril shard, and then continue terrorizing this teddy bear. Show this wall clock who's boss and shove it out of your way. Get small again, head on through, and get an incredibly early and currently useless dark matter from the Tea Party Garden balcony. Now since you have Blizzard, you can swing on back over to Traverse Town and put those candles out to unlock this chest and get a defense up. Over in Olympus are plainly visible treasures that I will now narrate over. First off, you've got this blue trinity on the left for a mithril shard, then this chest behind these nearby pillars for a mega potion. The blue trinity on the opposite end will give you puppies 22, 23, and 24. Do Phil's dumbass barrel minigame to learn the thunder spell, and yes, since you can beat the entire game without stepping foot into the Colosseum, this all falls under optional content. Send this three-headed mutt to obedience school to get the Inferno Band and chat with Cloud on your way out for the Sonic Blade ability, regardless of whether or not you beat him before. Take notes, Leon. If you want, since you're now armed with Thunder, you can backtrack to Traverse Town and use it on the exposed wires in the 3rd District. This will raise some platforms in the Gizmo Shop, allowing you to press these three buttons. Once you do so, let this clock wind up for a bit and then examine it for two postcards. You can go ahead and mail those for a Mega Elixir and an Oracalcum. Also, while you're here, you can get a Kiraga Gummy from the Dalmatians if you've gotten the four puppy chests I've shown. On your way to Deep Jungle, you might as well stop at Wonderland to use Thunder on those two pink flowers from earlier. The first are in the area you first access by pushing the boulder. Shock those flowers for a Thundara Gummy. Then make your way over to the other set, that's Corner of Lotus Forest, Stove Hole Painting, and shock these ones for puppies 58, 59, and 60. Now to this backwater world that doesn't exist anymore, beneath the treehouse on this elevated portion of netting is a chest with a mega potion. Climb your way up to the roof of the treehouse for a protect chain, and then use the power of waking to get into this boat. You didn't think you could do it, but the power was in you the whole time. Or just come back later with Glide, but that's no fun. Regardless, you get a mithril. Dropping down into the jungle below and directly in front of the treehouse will drop you off at the tunnel, which houses this mega ether. Taking the jungle slider to the camp, you can collect research notes by examining the laundry, the globe, and the gramophone, and then doing an experiment at the table, which converts a potion potion into an ether. Likewise, examine the clock and the flagpole for recipe cards, which will allow you to cook a potion into a high potion at the stove. If you go over to Hippo's Lagoon, you can actually get everything here right now with a bit of tricky jumping. A few hops up here will get you this mega potion, and the chest next to this very thin tree will release puppies 25, 26, and 27. Now this one is definitely not intended for your first visit, but a keyblade swing after a calculated jump can get you over to this chest with a meteor gummy. Make your way to the creatively titled Vines and swing across these six second video clips that were taken from us too soon until you reach this chest with puppies 28, 29, and 30. Now go to the immaculately named Vines 2 and swing like the 60s until you land next to this mithril chest. Believe it or not, we still don't have Donald and Goofy and we don't need him to get to the cliff and climb up here to get this mega potion and this mithril shard. Alright, reunite with the boys, open this chest in the tent for what should have been a tent, but is instead a mithril shard. Then do the blue trinity outside for puppies 34, 35, and 36. 
On your way up to the treehouse, grab this other blue trinity for a Thundara gummy. Nothing else to grab until after you beat Clayton, upon which you can enter the waterfall cavern for some intense platforming. In ascending order, pick up a mithril shard, puppies 31, 32, and 33, a mithril, and an auric alchem. Now after sealing the keyhole, you can hop right back into deep jungle and get five prizes for completing the jungle slider minigame. Basically, it's split into five courses and you need to grab 10 pieces of fruit on each portion to get your reward. You need to get every single piece to get each reward, so for the first one, stick to the left, then the right, then stay center, and you'll get an elixir. The game will drop you off at the camp, make your way back up to the tunnel. You have to collect all 10 again, but this time make sure you're hugging the left side after the last piece to access the second level. In here, stay center for the first two clusters of fruit, and then when the area opens up, aim between the two rock formations and curve a bit to the left for the third fruit in that group. Then make a sharp turn to the right and get the last fruit and win an AP up. When you come back through, keep to the left after the last fruit to get to the third course. In here, stay centered for the first three, then hug the left for the next three. Back to center for the following three and stay centered to grab the 30th fruit and win some dark matter. On your return trip, keep to the right to get to the fourth course. And here you'll want to be centered for the first four, then hug right for the next two. Back to center for the next four and then win a defense up. Finally, stay left when you come back for the last level inside the waterfall cavern. This one's a bit tricky and all the fruits are basically in the center, but you need to make some small adjustments especially on the last one, lean to the left a bit to get your last prize a power-up. You might want to tilt your left stick back a bit to slow Sora down if you're having trouble. Business as usual, head back to Traverse Town with your Red Trinity ability and use it on the planks in the first district to break into the alleyway for puppies 4, 5, and 6. Speaking of, you can pick up a Faraga and Thundara gummy as rewards for saving 21 and 30 puppies respectively. After running errands for Sid, blue Skidoo on into the 100 acre wood and make your way to the meadow where you can nab a mithril shard inside this log. Run over to Pooh's house, which is what I call my toilet, and rough up the chimney. Head inside to pick up the Mega Ether you dislodge and raid Pooh's stash cabinet for an elixir which he does not need because the denizens of this world feel no pain. Now that you've sealed Traverse Town, you can participate in the humbly named Phil Cup, get through that to learn gravity. You can also complete it on your own to win a combo plus ability and one more time during the time trial to receive a tech boost ability. Head on over to Agrabah, you'll start off in the plaza next to this Mega Potion and you can hop up here for a Mega Ether. Then pop into the storage room and destroy this barrel to clear the way to the Mega Potion. Over on Main Street, hop down to the ledge with the currently closed off entrance to the bazaar and nab this Mega Ether. After meeting Jasmine in the alley, hop up to open yet another Mega Potion chest. Trespass on into Aladdin's house for a scissors gummy because sure, he has that, as well as a Mega Elixir. Push this dresser out of the way and unlock a small keyhole which will open a nearby gate outside. Head down the stairs into the plaza and hop across to the other side and kill these pot smoking spiders. Grab the cottage out of this blue chest and then head through the recently opened gate. Platform on over to this dark matter chest. After Aladdin squanders his first wish on some flimsy banded heartless, hit up this blue trinity in the bazaar for a mega ether. Then hop up here for a Thundara gummy and proceed to the highest point in the room for a fire ring. After Pot Centipede is dealt with, return to where you first entered the palace gates and jump down onto the roof of this shop for a Proterra chain. Over in the Cave of Wonders entrance, there is a Mega Ether near the entrance to the hall. This next part is just stupid. From here you can access this blue chest on a pillar here, and I'll be honest with you, it's really not worth it. With a very precise barrel placement and jump, you can get puppies 49, 50, and 51 a bit earlier. It's way easier with high jump and even easier with glide. As you can see, I felt very accomplished with this one. In the hall now, jump to the ledge above these spitting heads and grab this elixir. In a much easier bit of early access, down here, a keyblade jump can get you a mithril shard on this ledge. In the next room, the bottomless hall, go to the top of this big platform for a cottage. Yet another keyblade jump here, and honestly, you might not need it, but you'll get an elixir from this chest. Backtrack to the hall and jump across this lonely spitting head to access a small portion of the bottomless hall where there's a mega potion. Also, push this block, then follow it down and find that it totally did not land where you pushed it. Here in the silent chamber, loudly jump in unison around this blue trinity for a Thundara gummy. Then swim into the dark chamber and jump across from this save point to get this cottage. Make your way to the relic chamber to find that block you pushed. And hop on over for a mithril. Across from that is a platform with a thunder ring. Swim into the area behind you to access this portion of the silent chamber where you can light this statue, which will be important for later. Come back to the relic chamber with Aladdin and then have him fling his monkey at the statue so you can access another part of the dark chamber, which, I mean, they're all dark, so I don't know. Anyway, open this chest in here for a meteor gummy and then swim up this waterfall because sure, and then activate this statue to lower a platform with a Proterra chain on it. From here, you can get your first torn page. Up in the treasure room, give your party CTE and use this red trinity to release a mithril shard and some pocket change. Jump onto the fireplace for a defense up and jump over to the treasure pile for another mithril shard and then continue on for puppies 37, 38, and 39. Have Aladdin phone a friend on the statue nearest to the save point and get blown and give yourself access to this Thundaga gummy. 
After the Jafar fight and friendship, Speely Keyhole Seely used the Green Trinity inside this dirty closet to retrieve an AP up. Now that we have the ability to become a vertical G-rated human centipede, we have a couple errands to run, which is a sentence I say at least three times a day. Back in Traverse Town, use the Green Trinity in the accessory shop for access to the item workshop, somehow not destroying his jewelry case. Up here, you can grab puppies 7, 8, and 9, as well as a mithril shard. Also, examine the poster next to the forge for postcard number 9 and mail that one for an AP up. Since you grabbed a torn page in Agrabah, you can go back to the 100 Acre Wood and complete the Honey Tree minigame to win Nature Spark. I would recommend making sure you clear the minigame with at least 100 licks, as that's a requirement for earning Sora's cheer ability much later on. Over in Wonderland, use the Green Trinity in the Rabbit Hole for an elixir, and then make your way over to the Bazaar Room, shrink down, and use the one in the stove for a Mithril Shard. In Olympus Coliseum, you can use the Green Trinity near the leaderboards for a Mithril. While you're here, you might as well grab a missable item, a holy gummy that you can only get if you extinguish all of the torches here with Blazara. In Deep Jungle, head to the treetop for this bastard of a trinity, which only rewards you with a measly Mithril Shard. Now in Monstro, we can be really obnoxious and get this scan gummy with a precise jump, even though we'll be getting high jump in like 5 minutes. Make your way through Chamber 1 to Chamber 2 and grab this cottage on the ground level. Then head into Chamber 3 and jump down to claim this Mega Aether. Go back to that elevated portion of Chamber 3 and walk into this Chamber 2 entrance. From here, you can use a Keyblade Jump to get this Mega Elixir on this platform with barrels on it. Jump back over to where you started and head into Chamber 5 with continuing service to Chamber 6. After what is surely a heartless rave to be remembered, head to this low portion of the room to free puppies 76, 77, and 78. You can use this barrel in Chamber 6 to get these platform chests right now, the first of which will yield your second torn page. It's a tricky keyblade jump, but you can make it over here for a mega elixir, or really just come back in two minutes with high jump. Even so, you can tiptoe and keyblade jump your way to this platform with a mithril chest. Go through this entrance to chamber one, and then continue on through two, and then three. Here you can toss this barrel down and use it to boost yourself up to the other side where there's an osmos gummy. Use the barrel here to reach the above blue platform with a flare gummy on it. Back on the other side, use a barrel once again to boost yourself up to this platform with puppies 55, 56, and 57. Use the Chamber 2 entrance, not the one below this platform, and then continue on into Chamber 5, and then on into 6, and then go down to your left and back into 5, I know. In this part of the room, you can get a Thundaga Gummy, a Mega Aether, and use this Blue Trinity for a Cottage. From here, you can use some Barrel Trickery to reach this Mithril on this blue platform, and then hop across to this Intestinal Shelf and eliminate this Barrel to rescue Puppy 79, 80, and 81. From here, you can hop back down to the middle level and enter Chamber 4, whereupon you can beat up the Parasite Cage as Riku pretends to help and get Goofy's cheer ability. Now you'll be able to access the Blue Trinity in the mouth, but first open this chest for high jump, which will make your life a lot easier, although it will not erase your past shames. Use your new Air Jordans to get up on the ship's roof and use the Green Trinity here for a Mithril Shard. Now use that Blue Trinity down there for a Cottage and two surely useless by now potions. Hop up to this platform closest to Monstro's Pearly Whites to get the Water Gleam Summon Gem, which serves as proof that elephants are beneath whales on the food chain. On the other side, parkour up these planks for a cottage, and then grab this chest closest to the Chamber 1 entrance for puppies 73, 74, and 75. Head over to the throat and use the Blue Trinity for a Mithril Shard, and then bully Parasite Cage some more until he teaches you how to stop the passage of time. After being sneezed out by a whale, just another Tuesday, you can use your new High Jump ability to grab some stuff in Agrabah, starting with this chest on Main Street containing a Mithril. Next, you can go to the palace gates and climb to the highest point to find puppies 52, 53, and 54. Now head back to the Cave of Wonders, and if you remember that wall you opened up by lighting a statue, you can now use high jump to reach that ledge in the silent chamber. Light this statue inside the hidden room to reveal another opening containing puppies 46, 47, and 48, and a haste 2 gummy. And if you didn't get it before, now's a good time to get that puppy chest that I got before with the barrel. Return to Traverse Town to see that Geppetto already has a new house. Apparently Leon is a real Ty Pennington of Traverse Town. Listen to Grandpa talk about the war for a bit until he gives you the Geppetto gummy ship model, which would be like if I called my car the regular Patmobile. Eh, actually. While you're here, grab the Wishing Star keychain and inspect Geppetto's paw for the final postcard. Mail that for your last reward, a defense up. Since we're in town, you can pick up some rewards from the Dalmatians, a Mithril Shard for saving 42 puppies, and a Torn Page and a Mithril for saving 51. With that, head over to Merlin's, where he'll give you the Spellbinder for learning all of the first level spells. Also, as you've now got two Torn Pages, head back into the Hundred Acre Wood and check out Rabbit's House. Here, we will descend onto Rabbit's crops like a locust with giant feet and pluck his plants and get three potions and an elixir. Business as usual, complete the Block Tigger mini game, which is really quite easy if you just stand in front of a carrot and press rush whenever Tigger jumps, and the Torn Page will turn into a Mithril Shard. Also, aim to get a score of at least one. 150 for that cheer ability. You can also go to the hill and complete the awful swing minigame. You basically have to half-ass it so that Pooh lands not too close but not too far, so vary your R1 presses. If you manage to send Pooh hurtling into Eeyore's house, the torn page will turn into the knowledge of the Stopra spell somehow. 
pop back into the hill and this time really send that bastard flying so you can have a score of 40 or higher for Sora's cheer ability later. I filmed this part out of order, but you can also head over to Pooh's house again and light the campfire, talk to Pooh, and receive a mithril, even though you just launched him into the final world. Last piece of business before moving on to Atlantica, you can do the Pegasus Cup now, so beat up Leon and Yuffie for the strike rate ability, do it again on your own for an Oracalcum, and yet again during the time trial for some dark matter. Alright kids, let's assault some clams. In the Undersea Valley, you can cast fire on this clam, don't think too hard about it, and get a Mithril Shard, smack that white clam behind it for a Mega Aether, and hit the one below for a Mega Potion. Right next to that and up a little bit is this Hidden Alcove where you can hit this one for a Mithril, hit this one on a Lone Pillar for an Elixir, and this one against the wall down here for a Cottage. Continuing our Rampage in the Undersea Cave, you can strike this one for another Cottage. The Slaughter continues in the Undersea Gorge where you can use Blizzard on this low blue clam for a Mithril Shard, and hit this white one in the center of the room for a Mega Aether. Swim on over to the Undersea Garden and attack another Harmless Clam for a Mega Potion. Head back into the Gorge and then to Ariel's Grotto. You can break this barrel for an Aether, although I'm pretty sure I've had occasions where it doesn't always drop. Grab this Mega Potion on the lowest level and then check out the higher shelves for a Cottage and the penultimate Torn Page. My Bloodlust against Clams is insatiable. In Triton's Palace, hit this one near these three pillars for a Mega Aether and the one closest to the Gorge entrance for a Cottage. Smack this white one closest to the Throne Room entrance for an Elixir and cast Thunder on the yellow one for a Mithril Shard. Once you make your way to the sunken ship, immediately head left and downwards and tap nothingness for a mithril shard. Inside this piece of wreckage, you can find an elixir. Head below deck and watch the most nonchalant shark attack in fiction before grabbing the crystal trident. You can hit these barrels and boxes and you could get a couple of ethers or you could get none. Behind the box in the corner is a chest with a mithril shard. If you go below below deck, you'll find yet another clam who dares to clam in your presence. Assault it for a mithril. Back outside the ship, enter the other hole in the wall to access the gorge where you can activate this geyser by hitting it. Ride the current upwards to dislodge this big ass chest which you can open for an oracalcum. When you come back to fight Ursula, you'll have to take care of the shark at least one time. Glut will always drop a high potion upon defeat and he has an 80% chance to drop an ether and a 30% chance to drop a mega potion. In the den of tides, take a right to enter the cavern nook where we will ambush our final clam for a mega ether. Kill Ursula's pets to learn the mermaid kick ability. After that, re-enter Ursula's room and light her sea urchin on fire, causing it to explode, which makes this clam spit out his lunch, which so happens to be a mithril. Technically, we were only somewhat responsible for that. Hit giant Ursula in the face a few times and King Triton will upgrade your thunder magic and give you Anthem's report 3. Afterwards, go to Ariel's grotto and talk to Ariel for the crab claw keychain. With that torn page from the grotto in hand, we can now access the bouncing spot in 100 acre wood. Ignore the pumpkin hen keychain, I'm an amateur. Humor Tigger and Rue by jumping on tree stumps and then hitting nuts into their giant pot until it breaks. You'll want to do this in under 30 seconds for the cheer ability. I recommend using a long keyblade and trying to hit the nuts as early as possible. You'd think I'd have something inappropriate to say here, but I'm getting pretty burnt out. Jump into the exposed stump hole for an AP up and then whack the rotted part of the nearby log for a mithril. Owl will trade you some good items in exchange for rare nuts, of which you can only hold one of at a time. First up, jump on the stump near Piglet to raise this plank into the air. Jump onto that and then onto the tree for a nut. Trade that for a power up. Next, jump on the stump near Rue to raise the other nearby stump into the air where you can grab nut number two and trade that for a defense up. From the area where the bouncing minigame always finishes, you can jump onto a branch and from there access the dark matter chest beneath two rare nuts. Head back down and use the seesaw with Rue and grab one of the two rare nuts and trade that for a mithril shard. Repeat the process and grab the other and trade the fourth nut for an AP up. Next, use the seesaw with Tigger and then jump onto the branch on your right to reach the last rare nut, trade that for an oracalcum. Look at all these nuts, says Owl. But wait, there's more. Use the seesaw with Tigger again, and this time jump over the tree that Pooh's inspecting. From here, you can jump to your lower left for a chest with a mithril shard, jump back up and into the spidery tree hole to dislodge the shield 2 gummy. With that, leave the bouncing spot and receive a mithril as your reward. Alright, on to Halloween Town. In Guillotine Square, high jump up to this ledge for a power up. Head over to Jack's house and ring the doorbell three times like some sort of goddamn psychopath until the house gives you an elixir in hopes that you'll just go away. Before doing that, check underneath the stairs and grab the Thundara gummy. In the research lab, examine the bookshelf for the final torn page. Get the forget-me-not from Sally after defeating the Heartless in the graveyard. Later, get the Jack in the Box after playing the Mayor's Sick Twisted game which makes a pumpkin explode for some reason. Also, do this. It's fun. Once you make it to the bridge, there's a chest on this ledge with a Meteor Gummy. And one down here with a Flare Gummy. They intend for you to use Glide on this last one, but some awkward high jumping can net you an early defense up. At Ogie's Manor, jump to what must be certain doom, survive, and then use this Red Trinity for a Mithril Shard. Back up topside, this green chest outside the front door contains an Aether. Keep in mind that any chest you don't get before beating Ogie's Manor will just reappear in the Manor Ruins later. In a suspended cage to your left is a chest containing an Oracalcum. Inside, grab another Aether out of this green chest. If you truly must, jump onto this toothy thing and rescue this Mega Aether from its cage. Disembowel Ogre to Boogert for the Holy Circlet accessory in Ansem's Report 7, and then beat up his house slash lingering spirit for a gravity upgrade. After that, talking to Jack in the research lab will get you the pumpkin head keychain that I totally didn't already have in earlier footage. Leave the world and then immediately re-enter and then head to the cemetery which you can access via the previously locked door in the Moonlight Hill. There's a bunch of items in here including a scissors gummy, a holy gummy, puppies 64, 65, and 66, and some dark matter. 
Also, go back to the site of the manor and you can grab a chest that was in a far-off suspended cage containing puppies 40, 41, and 42. With your final torn page, enter the 100 acre wood again to find the muddy path restored to its filthy, dirty glory. Complete this minigame, preferably within 5 minutes, and the torn page will turn into an EXP ring before the 100 acre wood keyhole is locked. After the book spits you out, jump back in and talk to Avil at Pooh's house. If you met all of those minigame requirements, he'll give you Sora's cheer ability. You should also be able to pick up the Mega Elixir from the Dalmatians as a reward for rescuing 60 puppies. Okay, as for Neverland, grab this chest in the corner of the galley for a meteor gummy. After Anti-Sora, open this chest on the bed for puppies 88, 89, and 90. Then opening the hatch and dropping down to the cabin below will lead you to a chest with a Proterra chain. After walking the plank, you can actually back out of the Heartless or Hook fight and backtrack to the hold where you can get this paper gummy and puppies 82, 83, and 84. After beating Hook at the clock tower, open this green chest in the corner for a flare gummy. After sealing the keyhole, re-enter the world and go back to the pirate ship where you can now freely access the crow's nest and retrieve this oracalcum. Over at the clock tower are 12 items if you don't mind waiting 12 hours, which I did, that's how much you all mean to me. Depending on what number your in-game playtime starts with, a different door will be glowing which will grant you a prize for opening it. So open the 1 o'clock door for an Aura Calcum, 2 o'clock for a power up, 3 o'clock for a mithril shard, 4 o'clock for a power up, 5 o'clock for an AP up, 6 o'clock for a mithril, 7 o'clock for an AP up, 8 o'clock for a defense up, 9 o'clock for an Aura Calcum, 10 o'clock for a defense up, 11 o'clock for a mithril shard, and 12 o'clock for a mega elixir, and now the word clock means nothing to me. Also, look, the whole clock face is lit up now. I hope you're happy, Sora, because I'm not. With Neverland sealed and glide obtained, we can do some extra stuff now. Back in Wonderland, we can glide from this point in the Lotus Forest to get this Oracalcum chest, and then head back through here to the Tea Party Garden where we can get a flare gummy and puppies 19, 20, and 21. Glide over to this other hedge and open this chest for a mithril. Over in Agrabah, return to the palace gates and high jump back to the tallest spot, and then glide over to this blue chest containing an Osmos gummy. Back in Halloween Town, jump back up this building and then glide over to this other building for puppies 70, 71, and 72, and an elixir. And finally, at the Mystical House in Traverse Town, we can now glide over to this rock to rescue puppies 1, 2, and 3, and while you're here, you can pick up your reward for saving 72 puppies in Oracalcum. Also, sealing Halloween Town and Neverland caused the Hercules Cup to open, so let's indulge in some sanctioned violence. We'll get the Metal Chocobo Keychain for beating Cloud, and then Herc's Shield for beating Hercules. Beating those first three cups will cause the Olympia Chest to open, and we'll also learn how to use the Yellow Trinities. Re-enter the Hercules Cup and win it solo for a Critical Plus ability, and you know the drill, do it under the Time Trial for the Gravity Break ability. As you can see, Sora is absolutely thrilled about it. Now that we can do Yellow Trinities, make like a disappointing sequel, and return to Neverland, where you can push this door in the hold to access one of the best treasure troves in the game. In here there's some Dark Matter, an Oracalcum, puppies 85, 86, and 87, and up here an upgrade for your arrow magic. Keep in mind you can do the Yellow Trinity in the Cave of Wonders now, but beyond journal completion it's absolutely useless as you can reach the area it supposedly unlocks with glide and even high jump. Not KH1's best moment when it comes to world design. Back in Traverse Town you can push these blocks outside the Mystical House and climb up to reach the chest with an AP up in it. You should also be able to get the Ultima Gummy, the reward for saving 81 of the puppies. Oh god, it's Hollow Bastion time. Okay, right off the bat, there's a chest behind these stalagmites with a life gummy in it. Make your way up to this big platform for puppies 91, 92, and 93, and then over to this one for a Blazara ring. Jump into this bubble to go underwater and snag this meteor gummy. When you resurface, climb your way up and get betrayed. After that, jump and glide over to this platform with the Mega Elixir chest. Down at base level, jump into the higher bubble to reach the other half of the area where there's some useless platforming materials, but more importantly, a chest with a mithril. Next to this blue crystal is a Thundara gummy, and on the platform across from the balcony is a paper gummy. Head into the upper section of the waterway and have Beast shoulder check this flimsy wall so you can reach this Thundaga gummy. In the lower portion of the waterway, open the chest near the save point for a Fira ring. Fira? Fira? Titus, Titus, freeze this bubble and jump up to the ledge to get this dark matter, which I've now talked about in every Kingdom Hearts related video on this channel, Jesus. Progressing into the waterway, have Beast demolish another wall to enter the dungeon, whereupon you can open the chest with a Thundaga gummy and an Ultima gummy. Fast forward to after your first fight with Riku, grab onto this ledge on the pillar here and jump over to the opposite pillar to get this AP up. Now for the library puzzle, which I love playing but hate narrating. Alright, you only need to pick up three books and place two to progress the story as seen here. After you've revealed the red button, use Green Trinity for the last time to reach this yellow book, Azul Volume 3. Back at the entrance, slot that into place and then grab the blue Salig Volume 6. In the other spot, insert Mava Volume 6, which you got upstairs. Put Salig in the spot behind you and then wrap around the bookcases to grab the yellow Nahara Volume 5. Head upstairs and put that one in place and grab the revealed Mava Volume 3. Back downstairs, put the green book with the others to reveal a lone desk with a purple half it Volume 4. Go back upstairs and put half it in its rightful place. And fun fact, did you know that the names of these different books are references to nothing at all? Believe me, I checked. To your right, spin this thing until you can open the chest with a Mega Potion inside. Spin this high up one until you can claim the AP up and then spin the one at the bottom of the same pillar for an elixir. There's one more up 
upstairs you can spin for a mithril. Finally glide to the top of this bookshelf to claim the Ultima Gummy. Head through the secret passage you reveal through the book puzzle and use gravity on the floating chest for puppies 97, 98, and 99, which are, you guessed it, not the last puppies. Examine the blue crystal to catch a ride up to the highest level of the lift stop where you can once again use gravity on a chest for an underwhelming Osmos Gummy. We'll be back here again a little later. Back down at the library, you might as well back out into the map and re-enter at the waterway save point where you can jog over to the dungeon and do the blue trinity for a cottage, a mega potion, and a mega ether. You can back out once again and re-enter at Rising Falls to use the White Trinity for a Thundaga Gummy. While we're at it, we can go and get all the other White Trinities now, and Neverland head to the deck and use the White Trinity near the wheel for puppies 43, 44, and 45, and Halloween Town use the Trinity at Moonlight Hill for puppies 67, 68, and 69. In Atlantica, use the Trinity in the center of Triton's Palace to get an Aura Calcum. In Monstro, make your way to the lowest portion of Chamber 6 and perform the Trinity for some Dark Matter. In Agrabah, right at the entrance of the Cave of Wonders, use it to get an Ifrit Belt. In Deep Jungle, drag your ass all the way to the Cabin of Hearts and use it to get an Aura Calcum. In Olympus Coliseum, use the Trinity right in the middle of the gates to get Donald Violetta Staff. In Wonderland, make your way back to the Painting Area and use the Trinity here for the Lady Luck Keychain. And finally, in Traverse Town, go to the Secret Waterway and touch tips to claim an Aura Calcum. While you're in town, you can now receive a Tech Boost ability from the Dalmatians as a reward for saving 90 puppies. Alright, back in Hollow Bastion. After the Emblem Puzzle, head through and use this lift to take you to the waterway. Use this elevator on the right to ascend to the lift stop and then examine this red crystal for a mithril. Back where you first entered from the entrance hall, examine the other crystal to switch the direction of the lift you were just on. Ride it again, this time to the upper level where you can use gravity on this chest for an Aura Calcum. Outside at the upper part of Castle Gates, turn right and glide over to the platform where you can use gravity on this chest to save puppies 94, 95, and 96. Examine this red crystal and activate the moving platform and use it to glide over to this lone pillar with an aura calcum, then glide directly across to open this chest with a haste 2 gummy inside. After you ride on the big platform, use this really good blue trinity for a mega elixir and two cottages, then open the chest against the wall for a thundaga gummy. Continue onwards and when you're back outside, turn left for a chest with an aura calcum. In the high tower, use gravity on this floating chest for a thundara ring, activate the red crystal to move one of the giant blocks. In the other half of the high tower, use gravity on this floating chest for an osmos gummy, activate this crystal to move the other block, make your way up and activate the yellow crystal, climb up to the highest ledge and open this chest for a mega elixir, examine this red crystal to change the path of the lift in the library lift stop. From here, jump down and glide into the opening at the bottom of the giant blocks to access part of the lift stop, use gravity on this floating chest for the royal crown, an incredibly good accessory. Back in the library, enter the lift stop and ride this lift after having altered its path, where it'll take you to this floating chest which has a Rama belt inside. After that, there's nothing else to get until after you beat Riku Ansem. Once you're back in Traverse Town, you can revive Mushu from Fire Glow, and the Fairy Godmother will give you the Lord Fortune Staff if Mushu was your last received summon. If you really want to, you can fight the two secret Heartless bosses before returning to Hollow Bastion. Stop by the Desert in Agarba to beat Contest winner Kurt Zisa for the Xanthan Suket ability and Ansem's Report 11. Likewise, go to the Clock Tower in Neverland and kill a ghost to upgrade Stopper to Stopka. On your return trip to Hollow Bastion, there's a new fourth bubble in the Rising Falls near the top. Enter that to go underwater and find a defense up. In the library, after Bell and Beast reunite, talk to Bell to get the Divine Rose keychain. In the Grand Hall, open this chest near Kyrie's unused prison to get the Oblivion keychain. To the left, if you're facing the final keyhole, is a chest with the last Dalmatians, puppies 61, 62, and 63. On the other end is a chest with some dark matter. After sealing the keyhole, return to the library and talk to Aerith to receive a shit ton of reading homework, Ansem's Report 2, 4, 6, and 10. Talk to her two more times to upgrade Kira to Kiraga. Finally, with all of the puppies rescued, you can claim your ultimate reward from the Dalmatians, Aroga, and the full gummy set. Also, with the Hollow Bastion keyhole sealed, you can now partake in the Hades Cup and win a whole bunch of junk. Beat Yuffie for the Genji Shield, beat the Behemoth to upgrade to Blazaga, beat Cerberus to upgrade to Thundaga, beat Cloud and Leon for the Lionheart Keychain, beat Hades to upgrade to Graviga, and beat Rock Titan to learn the Trinity Limit ability. After the Hades Cup is completed, a purple vase will appear next to the lobby entrance, and you can examine that for an Aura Calcum. Also, since you now have Blazaga, extinguish all of the torches again for a Shiva Belt. Head back into the lobby and do the Hades Cup solo to win Save the Queen for Donald, and then once more under the time limit to get Save the King for Goofy. With that done, you can enter the Gold Match and defeat the Ice Titan for the Diamond Dust Keyblade, and I'll just nonchalantly tack on that you can fight Sephiroth in the Platinum Match and defeat him for the One-Winged Angel Keychain and Ansem's Report 12. All of your spells should be at their third level now, so talk to Merlin to receive his Dream Rod, no comment. Okay, moving on to the end of the world, just kidding, once you get here you can back right out and go back to Hollow Bastion where you can fight the unknown. Nobody from before 2005 knows who he is. It's no big deal, just beat him up to win an EXP necklace and answer support 13. Alright, now we're actually doing End of the World. There's a long line of chests here, the first of which contains a Mithril Shard. Fight some Heartless after opening the next one to win a Pretty Stone. The next one contains a Mega Potion. After that, a Behemoth, which rewards you with a Mithril for beating it. Next, an Elixir. After that, a Mithril Shard. For the next one, defeat some Heartless and win another Pretty Stone. In the next red chest is a Cottage, followed by some Heartless in this Out of the Way chest, which relinquishes an AP up. And in the final chest of the Final Dimension is some Gale. In the Giant Crevasse, glide right out from the starting point to reach this chest with some Dark Matter inside. Higher up in the area, on the opposite side of where you started, is a chest with Donald's Meteor Strike weapon. 
Lower down on the opposite side of that is a drill gummy. In the middle of the area next to a thin bridge is a chest with an ultima gummy, and underneath this purple mass with the webbing is a full life gummy. Now for World Terminus, Traverse Town Section, Spirit Gem, Wonderland Section, Thunder Gem, Olympus Coliseum Section, Frost Gem, Deep Jungle Section, Bright Gem, Climb to the Top of the Agrabah Section, Blaze Gem, Atlantica Section, AP Up, Halloween Town Section, Lucid Gem, Neverland Section in the Galley Portion is Goofy's Mighty Shield Weapon, and next to the Save Point in the Hundred Acre Wood Section, a Mega Elixir, and next to the Spooky Evil Machine in the Hollow Bastion Section, an Elixir, yada yada yada, Chernabog, Bunch of Heartless, Mega Elixir, and the Final Rest. But it's not my Final Rest, there's still more stuff. You can get the Dream Shield from Merlin if you have one of every Arts item, which you get from playing Charades with the White Mushrooms. I like to go to the Lotus Forest in Wonderland for Fire, Blizzard, and Thunder, the Camp in Deep Jungle for Cure, the Graveyard in Halloween Town for Arrow, the Treasure Room in Agrabah for Gravity, and Below Deck in Atlantica for Stop. Let's see, what else? Oh, uh, synthesize a bunch of junk until you can craft the three super powerful weapons for your party. Fantasista for Donald, Seven Elements for Goofy, and Ultima Weapon for Sora. There are dozens of synthesis guides out there, and I have been put through enough today, so probably check out one of those for more details. Oh god, you can get a bunch of gummy blueprints from Geppetto if you talk to him after defeating a certain number of Heartless. 500 for the Sid, 1000 for the Cactar, 1500 for the Yuffie, 3000 for the Aerith, 4000 for the Leon, and lastly, as long as you have every summon and have slain 5000 Heartless, the Hyperion. On. Also, also, and I shit you not, if you enter Geppetto's house 30 times and then talk to Pinocchio, he will give you the Chocobo blueprint. Lastly, all of the gummy mission rewards. You can do these as you progress through the game, but I really recommend saving them for last, as by then you'll have all of the materials to handle the missions more easily. Regardless, Traverse Town missions reward you with the Wheel and Fang Gummy and the Moogle model. Wonderlands gives you a Wheel and Fang Gummy and the Veil for model. Olympus Coliseums gives you a Fang and Horn Gummy and the Pew Pew model. Deep Jungles gives you a Wheel and Fang Gummy in the Cerberus model, Agrabah gives a Wheel and Horn Gummy in the Tonberry model, Atlantica gives a Wheel and Caterpillar Gummy in the Pandemonium model, Halloween Town gives a Wheel and Caterpillar Gummy in the Ixian model, Neverland gives a Rock and Drill Gummy in the Gilgamesh model, Hollow Bastion gives a Rock and Angel Gummy in the Phoenix model, and finally End of the World gives a Shoes and a Dark Gummy and an Eden model. If you complete all of the Gummy missions, Chippendale will give you a Crown Gummy, the Bahamut model, and they tell you to go outside. The end. And there you have it guys, that's my treasure guide for KH1. This was a big project and I hope it'll be helpful to like at least two or three people. I got a couple of things in the queue for future Kingdom Hearts videos, so keep an eye out for those. Uh, I'm trying to be more assertive now with promoting myself, so click subscribe right now. I mean it, God damn it. Also shower me with praise in the form of blue thumbs pointing upwards, I'm really into that kind of stuff. And if you haven't seen it yet, check out my video where I talk about the merits of KH1 versus KH2, a true debate for the ages. That's all for me. I'm going to go drink a gallon of water now. Goodbye. See ya.